thank you so much for joining us for Impact State of Mind. Uh, I'm John Paul Parmigiani, CEO and co-founder of Impact Hub New York Metropolitan Area. Impact Hub New York Metropolitan Area is a nonprofit supporting entrepreneurs and change makers through programs designed to help impactful ideas succeed. We work across the New York metropolitan area broadly, um, but particularly with focus areas in Manhattan, Queens, Newark, and Morristown, New Jersey. Impact Hub is a global association of entrepreneurial communities in more than 100 cities in more than 55 countries around the world. Impact State of Mind is a virtual series created to support the social innovation community during the COVID-19 crisis. So thanks so much for joining for today's session. It is, and I know I say this all the time, but this is an extreme honor this week to have with us uh, Karen Brown Stovall, who is the founding executive director of Forward Ever Sustainable Business Alliance and uh, a dear co-founder of Impact Hub New York Metropolitan Area. Uh, and so it's great to have her on, but without further ado, I'm gonna hand it over to another great co-founder, Archana Shah, who will be interviewing Karen. So thanks everyone for joining us today. Hi Karen, good afternoon. How are you? I'm great. How you doing? Um, good. I'm really looking forward to talking to you today and telling us a little bit about yourself. So I'm going to start with a really simple question. Tell us about you. Oh gosh. Tell. Um, so I'll start a little. I'll give you a little snippet of personal. So I am um, <clears throat> an only child from Newark, New Jersey, and um, a proud New Jerseyan. Uh, went to Rutgers University and majored in journalism. And um, see, my career has um, had quite, um, uh, I started my career off in sales and, and marketing, working for Xerox Corporation. And here I am, um, my ultimate goal, believe it or not, throughout most of my career was to be in the nonprofit space. Um, mainly because of my, the inspiration from my parents um, having a call to community and a call to uh, creating equality within um, urban spaces. So I'm just sort of following in their footsteps. Um, me as a person, I, I consider myself sort of like a social justice warrior and um, a lover of all things um, the arts. And I, my true calling and what I really love to do is to interconnect the ecosystem. That's kind of what I want. I always see gaps and I'm always looking to figure out, like, does anybody see that gap besides me? How do we create a, a bridge so that um, it, it, it works the way um, we intend it to work so that everyone wins? Um, so that's how I kind of would describe myself. Amazing. Um, I knew you were inspirational. Now I'm even more inspired. Um, so you've led me right into kind of my next uh, question, but I want to frame it a little bit differently. Kind of why do you do what you do? And I think I, I would love to expand a little bit more on this uh, filling gaps. What does that look like? Could you share maybe some, an example of what that looks like for you? Yeah, so filling gaps would be, for example, um, I'll give you two examples. Um, one would be um, something very recent, um, which is that we have been all suffering um, tremendously. Um, e e I, I shouldn't say suffering. We've been all dealing with how best to deal with this time we're in. And we're make, most of us are making the most of it pivoting in the best way we know how. And so in that, For Whatever is a small business alliance. Um, and our signature program is Shop Nork. And so what we do is we support small local independent businesses via the new economy movement. And that is uh, via a triple bottom line lens, um, people, planet, and profit, right? Not just people and profit, but not just profit, basically, which is what capitalism, unfortunately, tends to focus on. Um, but so what we've been doing is we've been trying to figure out how best to support our businesses within the Shop North program. So we created a program called Sage Sessions. Um, and we have creative class community, um, artists, musicians, all the disciplines, dancers, um, poets, etc. cetera. Um, we wanted to figure out how do we get people out safely um, where they can observe social distancing, they can still feel that they're part of community. Um, and how do we bridge that gap between making sure that our small businesses 
have the opportunity to have visibility during this time when many of them are suffering as well as our creative our creative class entrepreneurs so myself along with our outreach coordinator we created um sage sessions um and that is um we brought together um a wonderful musician her name is janessa miranda here in in our community and um our coordinator, Jamie Bruno, she worked closely with Janessa to create a, a music session, an outdoor music session, um, where people can come support Strock North businesses. And we would have them strategically placed in on corners um, nearby the businesses so people could um, go to a couple of Strock North businesses and the other surrounding North um, businesses too, as well as supporting or, and, and observing and getting um, um, really great tastes of good, great music, getting a chance to um, see neighbors that they hadn't seen in a while, as well as, you know, of course, observe social distancing. So that is, you know, we're always talking about how do we get the, you know, the artists, the creative class um, to um, work alongside the business class. And that's kind of how we did it. And so we're now in the process of looking, um, taking a survey to find out how well we did. And it's coming out very well, like a 20% increase in sales by bridging the gap between the creative class and, and, and the traditional business brick and mortar businesses. Um, my, my, my second example would be the overall um, meeting JP um, and our CEO and um, having the chance to talk to him about what we do it for whatever. And of course, no, I had already known a little bit about Impact Hub, um, but being able to um, realize that our missions and visions and purposes are so interconnected and how we could at for whatever um, work closely with and of course co-founding the um that was early on we talked but now being a co-founder how we could offer access to our current um business community um by um offering them a more global if you will approach as a matter of fact we have an organization here in town called globally um globally yours and being able to um determine how we could give them the opportunity to be more uh, aligned with businesses that are all over the world and how that looks in terms of their supply chain, how they might look at how they build their business differently by just having access and, and resources. So um, those are sort of my examples of how, you know, I approach the work and, um, you know, a little bit more about the work. Oh, absolutely. Um, and, you know, what a segue into Impact Hub and how that really helps with kind of the filling gaps piece, right? Because now you're building into the ecosystem and now it's not just a local thing, it's a regional thing and a global thing to your, to your, um, to your point. Yep. Um, you touched upon this briefly, but I do want to go back to it. We're all in challenging times in different ways, be it sort of isolation, be it economic, be it uncertainty, whatever the case may be. How, is, how have these challenges affected your work? Um, we've been working closely with our um, local economic development uh, organization, Invest Newark and the City of Newark, and the local SIDS and BIDS. Um, and it, it's been very, very, um, it's been very helpful. It's been very, um, it, it's, it's squelled a lot of the anxiety a lot of our businesses are feeling. We've been able to pull together a lot of resources that we may have individually had, but now we've been able to bring them together to, to um, present a better offering. And so it's not just about now for me, Shop Newark. It's about getting, because Shop Newark has specific businesses in our program. Um, our, our, our program is about giving people incentive, right, to come to Newark, New Jersey, to shop with businesses that are online businesses, a part of Shop Newark. Um, but also now to, to sort of broaden that and say, listen, we need you just to come and support small businesses in this space because these businesses are suffering. They need to understand, they need to know that we're there to support them and they need to know that we are going to go the extra mile. So we've been working very closely with the North Community Development Network, 
um, organizations like um, the, the bids, like I said, like I, I see we have um, Ronnie Bruce, who is on the call, who is our South Ward bid leader, um, you know, working with her group. Um, we don't get a chance to talk all the time, but we're following each other. We're supporting each other. We're posting things. We're using hashtags. We're having safe sessions. We're doing all kinds of things just to ensure that the businesses have what they need. Many of our businesses in North weren't all, you know, weren't um, dig digitally um, equipped. We, we weren't there yet. Yeah. No, absolutely. That was uh, super insightful. Um, I find it really um, heartening that you use the word community a lot. And it feels like it's at the core of not just who you are, but the work you do both at Board Ever and also, you know, this crazy journey of Impact Hub that you're on with us. Yes. Tell us, tell us, tell us about the importance of that. Why, why community? I mean, community for most pe many people is just a bunch of people. Huh. Well, we see now more than ever, right? Um, with, uh, you know, our SDG goals, you know, um, for how we um, meet, um, and I can, unless you want me to, you can talk a little bit more about that. I'm sure you will, Archana, about the goals. Um, more now than ever, you know, when we heard, you know, corporations are people and, you know, um, double bottom line, those kinds of things, we, it, it, it did not include 99% of the people in our, in, in our nation. And most of our nation, as, as we all say, all things are local. We know politics are rooted locally. We know um, community development is rooted locally, obviously. Um, everything is about uplifting the people and people are, part, people are parts of community, right? And communities can go deeper, whether they be your faith community, if you have one or you choose not to have one, um, that's still your community. Um, whether you have the community in, you know, um, a place you live or a, a place you're from, people feel rooted and more connected. I, I, I think people will do more, not just for themselves, but when you say, hey, this is not just about you. Let's take COVID, for example. It's not just about you placing yourself at the top of the list at all times. It's about saying, hey, if I do this, then I can affect my whole community. Like yesterday we had Be Still Mondays. That's, that's put in place for a reason. And, and, and I applaud our mayor for that. Um, that's put in place because he said, it's not just about us being home, but it's about giving the people in our community that are, that are serving us, the people that work at the restaurants, the people that are delivery people, giving them a break. Let's give them a break, give them a chance to be home with their families and doing the things that are important to them so that they can fuel up again, right? Mm -hmm. and, and, and do the things that they do to serve. Um, so it's everything for me is community. And when, when I, I, I look at it like when you, if you want, I, I read something recently, it says, if you want to be blessed, be a blessing. It's quite, it's that simple. You know, mm -hmm. it always comes right back. If you know, I always put people like you know the forefront of what our work is. Whenever I approach our work, I say, "How does it help? Who does it help? Is it important? Mm -hmm. Will it change something? Will it help someone? You know, move their trajectory." That's absolutely true, and a really elegant way of sort of sharing that. So, thank you for that. Um, I'm just going to do a shout out to the attendees. If you have any questions while we have Karen as a captive audience with us. Um, feel free to put it in the chat. We'll try to get to it before the time is over. Um, we do still have a few minutes to, uh, to, I still have a few minutes to chat with Karen, so I'm going to take full advantage of that. Um, there are two things I wanted to circle back to or touch on. And I think one, uh, this will kind of carry through from the community conversation a little bit. What, what is it that you are, um, it, are bringing to the Impact Hub um, co-founding role? Like what is what is the lens that you're hoping to bring? What is what are you bringing to that that role, and what are you hoping to uh, bring? I'm hoping to bring the perspective of how to um, integrate uh, intergenerational um, business practices, um, so that we realize that it's not just. You know, people like to use labels of oh, the, the boomers, the Zoomers, Gen X, millennials, and they, they've had something to say about each one, 
and it's usually not always um, with the positive lens. I like to look at everything from a positive lens. So I didn't grow up with the smartphone and laptops and um, you know, smart TVs and all these kinds of things. How do we um, sort of bridge that gap? How do we make sure that we are creating policies um, that look at the lens from, you know, from the beginning, the middle and the end? Um, how do we best market ourselves? And I really want to talk just about what is it that, again, bridging that gap? So, for example, I'm really excited about working with Impact Hub Accra, right? We have such a strong um, Ghanaian community in Newark. We have such a strong um, African uh, diaspora in the um, metropolitan area. How do we ensure that the, the businesses that are here, that the business, that people that are looking to create businesses that are looking to, that might say to themselves, you know, I have an idea, but they don't know how best to go about it, but they know they can belong to an organization like Impact Hub and be aligned with people, um, the businesses that are feeling the same way in Accra, that are feeling the same way in Thailand, that are feeling the same way in all, you know, in Boston. Um, mm -hmm. So, um, and in Queens and in Morristown, but, it's, 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 not, it's unlike anything that I've ever experienced. Um, I'll give you an example. About five years ago, I was at a conference in Buffalo and it was um, a conference given by the Business Alliance for Local Living Economies. Um, and um, we, are, we were a part of that organization when they were a member organization. It was a hundred plus networks of local first orgs throughout North America. And we were at Buffalo was, was hosting. And I was there with um, a bunch of wonderful leaders. At the time, I was obviously not, um, um, they, they, we weren't co-founding this organization yet. And um, got a chance to have dinner with a bunch of um, ladies and, and in search of the uh, ultimate Buffalo wing in Buffalo. <laughs> and and um, we're sitting there talking to Ashara who started talking about how she was looking forward to founding Impact in Oakland. And I had not heard of it up until that point to me. And I thought, what a phenomenal opportunity to found this organization, to co-found this organization, to really put your own spin on what entrepreneurship um, might look like. Um, and so she talked about Impact Hub all night. And then two years ago, I meet JP at a conference and he's talking about Impact Hub, um, NYC and the, his vision, et cetera. And it just was like a sort of a full circle moment for me. Like, um, I, I'm ready for this, you know? And, 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 and so that's kind of like how I look at things. Like I know um, that the alignment of this organization, I believe so strongly in its mission to um, really look at all the problems that we have in the world and determine how we can best um, deal with them through how we manage our business, how we, go, how we walk through our life, how we um, interact with people, how we prioritize our time. Um, um, so yeah, I hope that sort of answered everything. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And then some, so that's always wonderful. Um, unless the audience has any questions, I'm seeing it here, um, I'm gonna just ask for last words from you. We're, we're almost out of time, but last, what is it that I haven't touched on that you would like to share with our audience today, um, be it around inspiration for doing social impact work, be it around personal, However you want to address that, Billy. Um, I would say um, reach out to your local community and determine where a gap is. What is, what is your strength? Um, I, I heard one of the um, Black Lives Matter um, leaders talking about how everyone during this time, everyone can't show up in the same way. Right? Everyone can't go to a rally. Everyone is not able to do that. Everyone can't write. Everyone, no one is good at everything. But during this time of 
um, uh, racial unrest, um, you know, all the things that we have going on in our communities that we don't need to necessarily talk about in detail now. But I would say if you are a writer, if you're good at writing, if you're good at social media, if you have a large network of people, if you have a resource that you think that everyone else knows about, they don't know about it. People may, may, may not know about it. Should one write about now is looking for how can I create another stream of income? How can I help a neighbor? You know, there's people that are not working, you know, 30, 40 million people. People are, you know, looking for, um, I, I see things all the time about food access. Um, share, just share information and be a blessing in any way you can and use your gift to uplift and um, create a better space um, that you're in. Um, Karen, it's been an absolute pleasure. And um, we do have a question here and I'm gonna, I'm gonna voice you. It's what's your outlook for 2021? How are entrepreneurs thinking about surviving, thriving in light of COVID and all the uncertainty of this year? Would love your, your you know, two minute insight on this. This is from Yorm, one of our attendees. <laughs> So well, my insight of 2021 is that we're not going back to normal, thank God, right? Because normal was not normal. Normal didn't benefit everyone. And so my, my hope, my outlook for 2021 is that we will be in a space where we will be um, no longer divided and see ourselves as individuals but see ourselves as individual, individuals as a part of a whole, I should say. Um, and that um, creating hybrid models. I think that everyone should look into how best to create a hybrid model, um, not just because of the pandemic, but because globally, right? You, if you have access to, and we all have access, right? This is an international world. Um, you could be sharing whatever you're doing locally with someone in another part of the state, the country, or the world. So determine how best to, um, to expand your models. Determine how best to maybe meet um, another uh, person or organization, a uh, business in your space or a space that you can um, that is interconnected with your space. So if you're food-based, maybe you're going to talk with people that are um, creating products that, um, that could, um, containers, if you will, there's a lot of uh, sustainable packaging. Um, reach out to other people and determine how you could interconnect your, your own ecosystems to create a better space for yourself. Um, and then hybrid models. I, I can't speak enough about hybrid models. Um, that, that's really helpful. And I think to your local point, it goes both ways, right? We can learn a lot from our global counterparts and um, our global counterparts can learn a lot from us too. And it's about creating those connections or interconnections to um, pass that on. One last question. We do have a last question here. Where do you see your organization in the next two to five years? Wow. Mm -hmm. I see us doing a lot of work in Africa. That's mm -hmm. my dream. <laughs> um, I, I, I do. I, I just really see us doing a lot of work um, on the continent. And um, I see us doing, um, I've been having conversations uh, for the past week or so about using um, uh, music mm -hmm. to spread the message of um, uh, creating sustainable um, business practices. Wow. And uh, I mean, what better vehicle than Impact Hub? Yeah. Um, Karen, I'm going to, I'm going to observe time. It is 1230. I want to really thank you for your generous conversation and sharing some time with us today. It was lovely to talk to you. Thank you. Thank you so much.